Hi, this is Sean Darrington, Senior Director of Product Management here at Exablox. In this short how-to video, I wanted to demonstrate two things. Number one, uh, how to create an NFS export within one system. And then secondly, how to mount that export as an NFS data store in your VMware environment. So let's get started. So I've already logged into my one system account and I've already set up and registered my one blocks rings. In fact, I've actually created a mesh configuration for remote replication. So let's go ahead and click on the VMware lab DR that I've set up and you'll see that I have two rings, VMware lab, which is a primary and then the VMware lab remote, which is a secondary. Um, on the left hand side, this is where you're going to create your NFS exports. Before I do that, it's a best practice to click on settings here and actually set up a virtual IP address for each of your rings. This will allow you to assign a static IP address that your clients, or in this case VMware, can access for that NFS export. And over time, as you have multiple one blocks and scale out, you don't have to worry about changing IP address configurations. This virtual IP address will provide that access for VMware to any of the appropriate one blocks in the ring. So in this case, I've already set it up. I wanted to highlight that because that is a best practice to do. So we're going to go ahead and remember this uh, virtual IP address that you set up. Now let's create the NFS export. So clicking on shares and exports, you can add either SMB or uh, NFS uh, exports. And I'm going to go ahead and create uh, NFS data store five. And you can see I've already done that for a few of these here. I'm going to go ahead and select this for my replication for the mesh configuration. I could select this just for my primary ring and that will not be replicated, but in this case I actually want it to be replicated. So I select that, I select NFS, uh, I already have the read write and root squashing permissions set correctly. Now I'm going to go ahead and click custom or you could do other things as well, but in custom I'm going to actually turn snapshots off. I'm going to manage my snapshots through the vSphere client. I'm going to enable compression as well as variable length deduplication for data reduction. Um, this is something that's beneficial in a VMware environment and now I can click save and this will actually create that share and then make that available to mount um, within my vSphere client. So now I'm in, uh, now I've logged into my vSphere client. I'm accessing in, at the top level at my uh, ESX server. Now on the left hand side on the hardware, I'm going to go ahead and click storage. Once I'm in storage, I'm already on the configuration tab here. I can see I have a number of data stores already created. Um, you can see I already have two NFS data stores for the one blocks. Uh, I'm going to add a third one and now I'm going to select NFS here and click next. Now I'm going to use that virtual IP address that I mentioned just previously within one system. This will provide that equal access for all the data stores to all the one blocks over time. And I don't have to come in and change my settings as my scale out uh, ring uh, expands in capacity and availability and performance. So with one blocks, you do want to use the slash exports slash path name or folder name. So I'm going to do NFS data store three. You notice that I had a number of them already created. I'm going to just keep the same sequence and start with three. So now I'm going to go ahead and give this a name, one blocks data store three. Now I can click next. Here's a quick summary and then I click finish and I'm done. Now this is actually one of the things that's really simple to do. So as you look at the capacity in your overall ring, you'll notice that each of these three exports have the same capacity available, available to it. 3.6 terabytes. So as you scale out in capacity, all of the exports have, on all of the data stores have equal access to that. So you don't have to worry about sizing or having a fixed, uh, fixed limitation about how much storage can be used by a data store. Now from here, you can go into your vSphere client and you can log into the VM and actually add that data store to it. Um, and that's as easy as it is to create an NFS export and make it available for use within VMware. Thanks for watching.